Hi everyone, I am Sam Bettens, trans man, musician, and father of four children. It is 64 degrees Fahrenheit in the spot in the world that knows no harsh winters, and I'm feeling pretty good about this day. It started off with a 5.30 a.m. outdoor swim, a few hugs from my besties at the school gate, and a very satisfying doctor visit. I have a good feeling about 2020. I think it's going to be a great year. That may be the topic of Vlog 25. Yes, Vlog 25. Can you believe it? It'll be the silver anniversary of my life as a vlogger. To celebrate this lovely occasion, I have a treat for you. I know a lot of you wonder what my transition has been like for the rest of my family. I can tell you all day that they're doing great, that they're adjusting really well, but I'm not in their heads. I'm sure there's a lot of things they don't tell me, and what better way to find out than to let them speak for themselves. So I'm going to be talking to Justin, my 22-year-old son, who's going to share his unique perspective on my transition. So here we go. And this is Justin Bedard, 22 years old, college senior, enjoying a last week of his winter break. If you think he looks like a football player, remember, we are not genetically related, and he is, in fact, a football player. He just finished his last season at Cornell. He has one more semester to go before he will be propelled into the real world with a real job in Chicago. Justin, I'm truly grateful you're willing to sit down with me. I know this is a little bit out of your comfort zone, but this vlog aims to educate people and normalize the topic of transgender. So just the fact that you're sitting here next to me means a lot and it makes a difference. All right, here we go, first question. Do you remember what went through your mind the very first conversation we had when I told you I was questioning my gender? Yeah, I remember it pretty vividly. Um, it was actually right outside this door right here. Um, I thought I was in trouble when you first said you need to talk to me because I <laughs> definitely come home a little too drunk a couple of minutes <laughs> over break. Um, no, but I just I just remember now you're saying that you had been, I think the term was gender dysphoria and being a little confused about it. And I pretty much, I think just kind of right away, it was like, you know, there's going to be some ups and downs and probably some changes if you do decide to go through with it. But I think I told you then that the most important thing was, you know, you doing what you felt like you need to to be happy. So we're about eight months in now. I've had top surgery and there's been some minor changes because of the hormones, but not really any big ones. Do you feel like anything's changed? Do you feel like you look at me differently? Do you feel like something's changed between us? Um, I would say honestly, no, not right, not right now. Um, pretty much the same person this far, which um, you know has made it a little easier just going through seeing other people adapt to it. You know, with the name change and you know going from man to sir, um, things like that. But then you still kind of being the same person has definitely made that a little bit easier that it's okay. I didn't come home after being away for eight months and now I'm just dealing with a completely new person. And I think that that's made it a little bit easier. Right. So do you think it'll be really different if I change physically like way more and my voice changes? You think that'll be like almost like a bigger shock than what's happened in the last eight months? I think definitely that could be more shocking than what's happened so far, just because thus far it's just been kind of the name change and, and some other smaller things. Um, I think the thing that would make that hard is me just being away, not living at home and then coming back and it kind of just being a completely new thing. But kind of, I feel like once you're, you're buckled into all this and you're kind of starting to just ride that wave of expecting changes and, and knowing that changes are gonna come, you can kind of just deal with it. I remember in the first conversation we had, like you said, you kind of right away told me, you know, I'll, I'll love you no matter what. And I think you should do what you have to do to be happy. Even if I don't understand it all the way, I would always say that you have to be you. And so in all the time since, we haven't really kind of following your lead a little bit. We haven't really talked about it much. Do you feel... I know you're supportive, but it's not like we have conversations about this and talk this through. Do you feel like... It's something you kind of needed to process by yourself. Were you maybe afraid if, that if you talked to me about it, you would hurt my feelings by asking the wrong questions? Or what do you think? Yeah, I think for me, um, again, being away from home and, and not seeing you or mom very much, a lot of it just had to do with I'm hearing about all these changes, you know, and just having to deal with it some, from so far away without really being involved in the process. Um, 
did make it kind of difficult to then step in and try to be supportive or try to understand, you know, what mom or Charlie or Jed or even you were going through with it because it's like, well, I don't really know. And, and I feel like just hopping on the phone and trying to ask questions and, and trying to really get a grip on it all kind of would have maybe made things a little harder rather than just kind of internalizing it and being like, okay, there's going to be changes, but right now there's not a ton that I can do about it from right. where I am. Um, I just need to, to ride it out and really get a better feel for what's going on when I'm home and actually get to spend some time around kind of what our new family dynamic is. Yeah, that makes sense. So you feel like the distance was maybe in a way kind of a kind of a good thing and, and no reason to kind of force, like you said, force phone conversations, mm -hmm. like FaceTime calls, right. like let's just kind of like see what happens next time we're together and, mm -hmm. and let's deal with it then. Yeah, because I think also that's really been so much of our relationship over the years has been face to face. We do really fun things together. We have a lot of similar interests that, you know, when we're together, we talk about, we'll go to football games. We you know, like listening to good music together, things like that. And that's just kind of hard to force to try to like, you know, we let's try to talk about this because now you're a man over the phone. And it's like, you know, I, I was just like, you guys are doing you out here in California. And I have a lot going on right now. Um, I'm happy that, that you're happy. I'm happy that things are moving in the right direction. But for me, there's not a ton that I can really get hands on with at this like point. Like from a distance. Right. That makes total sense. <clears throat> what would you say to a kid, um, either your age or maybe younger, that just found out his parent or her parent is transgender? Like, is there any kind of advice that you feel like you could give? Yeah, I would say just to deal with it in the way that you need to deal with it. There's no wrong or right way. There's no approach that everybody should take. There's no blueprint. Um, it's just more so if you feel like you need to reach out and talk to the person directly, have as many conversations with them as you can. If you feel like what's best for you is to just kind of internalize it, maybe share it with a few friends, maybe share it with nobody at all. Um, if that's what's helping you, do it. Don't neglect it. Don't try to just push it away and pretend it's not there because it is happening. But find a way that works best for you to make sense of it and you know it'll be okay that's cool do you do you feel like there's something um i don't know in the way we told you how we told you when we told you do you feel like there's something that either mom or i could have done differently that would uh would have made it better or would have made it easier or do you feel like you know things just kind of happen the way they happen um, yeah, I mean, I think every situation is different, um, for every person in your life that found out, you know, there's probably the perfect time to tell them the perfect situation. Um, it doesn't really go that way. You know, that's not how life works. You can't create things in a bubble and, and make this, the stars align and, and things make sense perfectly. Um, I think the way that I found out and the way that I was able to deal with it being all the way in New York at school, um, you know, that was a good situation for me. It worked for me. I would have liked to have been around a little more to get to spend some more genuine time with, you know, all of our new family. Um, but, you know, that that's just not always possible. So I think it was it was a good situation for me. Um, you guys were both super supportive, whatever I needed. Anytime I needed to have a phone call about it, anytime I needed space, um, I think it, it was given to me. So I, I think it was all in all a good situation given all the outside circumstances. Right. Well, there's definitely something that I learned from you. Um, me personally, I have the need, and you know this about me and mom, we, we talk everything through usually a million times, and I have the need to explain myself, and I, you know, I want everyone to understand exactly every step. I had already been reading and doing the research, and I had the strong desire to explain everything to you and to Taylor. And then I, I, really, I really felt like that's not what you needed, and, I, and that's, that's kind of what I learned out of all this is mm -hmm. that, um, like you said a little while ago, everyone is going to process this the way they need to process it. Some people need to talk. Some people just need to kind of sit with it for a while with themselves. And I learned to respect that. That's not what you needed. Maybe that's what uh, I need. And so I have other people to kind of talk that stuff through with. So, um, that's a good thing to remember that people just kind of will go with whatever feels best, uh, for them and not to force conversations if you feel like that's really not what they need. I learned that with my parents also. My mom needed different things than my dad needed. And so you just kind of have to navigate that a little bit. 
One of the goals of this vlog, one of the reasons I started making it is to kind of rid the world of misconceptions about transgender people. Um, and again, normalizing the topic around trans. So you're a uh, white uh, Ivy League college football player. What would you think, what's in your mind, maybe the biggest misconception about a guy like you? Yeah, I think I, I think that's a great point because everybody has misconceptions about them, um, no matter what you're doing. If you're the kid that stayed home and, and didn't even end up going to college, people definitely, you know, think a different thing about you than was probably true. And um, getting to Cornell, getting to an Ivy League school and then coming back home, I've dealt with a lot of people saying, oh, you know, he, he thinks he's too good for us or he thinks that, you know, he's going to go save the world because he's getting a good degree. And that's definitely not true. I think that for me personally and all of my friends at school and all you know my teammates we just wanted to do something challenging we wanted to do something that was maybe a little bit out of our comfort zone and that's not right for everybody that doesn't mean that we're judgmental or that we look down on anybody um it's just what was right for us and i think that you know that's true with any misconception about people is most of the time in life people are doing what's right for them and so i think it's more so on other people to adjust to that and adjust to, you know, where someone is in their life rather than that person trying to change for somebody else. I like that. It's very easy to look at someone. There's some parents at our school and you look at them and you kind of like have a feel by how they're dressed and how they come to school to pick up their kids. You get to know them better and then you realize there's so much more to them than what you, than what first meets the eye. So that's been the goal of this vlog about transgender. Justin made a great point about, you know, things that me, people might think about him that are not true. I hope you enjoyed an open conversation uh, between the two of us. I hope you enjoyed meeting Justin. We're all very proud of him. Uh, I'm very happy he was willing to do this. Um, and I hope it helped some of you uh, guys who may be um, in a situation like Justin, uh, have a parent or someone you love uh, who's going through a transition trying to figure out how to deal with it. And again, the goal is to make this easy to talk about, not this super loaded elephant in the room uh, kind of subject. And I hope we did that a little bit for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Again, it meant a lot to me to have him talk to me and talk to you guys openly about what this all means for him. I hope you guys started your year off just right. Push the like button if you like this video. Turn on your notifications if you want to know when the next one drops. As always, I love you. I appreciate you. Hang loose.